in their menacing roles. You must have also knew that um, my man from from Houston, Brian Hoyer, would go out there and stink worse than New York City garbage. <laughs> <laughs> you, you must have knew all that, huh? I mean, I'm not saying that I knew specifically that that was going to happen. I just thought that the t- the teams that I picked that they were the better team. Let's start with with the NFC teams. Man, we're going to start with everyone's darling. You the you like that guy, Kirk Cousins and the the NFC least winners, the Washington Redskins, they played host to Mr. Discount Double Check himself, Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. Now Cousins was making his first career playoff start. Man, they jumped out Pierre to an eleven to zero early lead. Seem seemed like they were gonna take control of that game, man, but they let Green Bay creep back in the game. Discount double check guy, Mr. Rogers, he caught fire. Green Bay scored on the next five possessions. Ultimately, you know, just beating Washington to death and Washington the party's over um, the fat lady has sung um, warm up the buses um, the church is now open for, for new membership um, whatever you want to say it's over for the Redskins and congratulations to, to Discount Double Check himself uh, Mike McCarthy, Green Bay Packers they're moving on in that in that first NFC wildcard game the Packers were, were able to win that game because they did something that they hadn't been able to do for weeks they were able to find their offensive identity and they hadn't been able to run the ball effectively, they were able to do that, um, they, they weren't able to use that run game to effectively give Aaron Rodgers enough space to do what he needed to do in in the passing game, which they were able to do that. But, you know, you take it with a grain of salt because they were playing against the Washington Redskins, winner of the NFC East. I thought that these were two teams that were just heading in in opposite directions. I mean, Green Bay was in a downward spiral and, and Washington had been playing great ball, but you know, it is the playoffs and Green Bay played themselves into a, a matchup with Washington for a reason. They they saw something that they could exploit and Mike McCarthy did a great job getting his team prepared and um and able to perform on Sunday night. Green Bay they went up tempo on the Redskins and the Redskins secondary is not the best in the world. So they went up tempo and they were able to, you know, tire out that Redskins defense. And they've done something, like you said, that they hadn't done really most of the year, which is run the ball. Both Starks and Lacey had rushing touchdowns. You know, you hadn't heard Eddie Lacey's name since he was a, you know, a rookie, basically. He had, he's had a very down year. So they were able to run the ball, pound the ball. Aaron Rodgers finding James Jones, founding, finding the tight end Rodgers. I mean, just having a, a, a excellent all-around game for Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers move on. Now, to that second wildcard game that I correctly predicted. Didn't know how Seattle would get it done. But I just had a feeling that Sierra's boyfriend, Mr. Russell Wilson, would find a way to get it done. Now, we all know that you all watched the game, so we're not going to bore you with the recap of every play from that game. Just just know that with 14 seconds left, down 10 to 9, the Minnesota Vikings had a chance to win that game. All they had to do was make a 27 yard field goal with their really, really reliable kicker, Blair Walsh. I mean, he just, he basically, I don't know what you call that. He shanked it. He, I don't know what, what happened. How do you, how are you, profe- how are you a professional field goal kicker and you miss a 27 yard field goal to win the game? In, in the playoffs, his record for making game tying or winning field goals that late in the game is not very good, which essentially tells me he either has an anxiety problem or he's just not good under pressure. And and that's something that the Minnesota Vikings have to look at. Uh, if they want to move forward with him as their um, permanent place kicker or not. Uh, basically, Blair Walsh, God bless him, man. He's going to have to live with that missed kick, you know, for the rest of his life. But, you know, to his defense, he was diagnosed with it's – a, it's a new disease, man. It's ELBS. 
extreme lemon booty syndrome and and what this is is um, <laughs> what this is is you get so nervous that you make unconscionable mistakes you make unfathomable it's unfathomable a word i don't know i have a sociology degree i don't have an english degree so blair walsh shortly after the game God bless him. He was he was diagnosed by the training staff. They had him in the locker room, you know, back in the training table for quite some time. Diagnosed with ELBS, extreme lemon booty syndrome. I, I think the weather had as much to do with a lot of those miscues in that game, a lot of the the defensive success as anything else. Because when when you look at it, both teams had you know good defenses. Seattle defense. Um, I mean, one of the the best in the league. Minnesota defense, about middle of the road. But what the weather did was effectively take a lot of um, of the pizzazz out of that Seattle Seahawks offense. This was a, a Russell Wilson who came to the game looking wonderful. I had him as my top quarterback in the league before last week, and. It just didn't pan out that way on Sunday. And I think a lot of it did have to do with the weather. Then you had the rushing champion. You had Adrian Peterson who came in and rushed for 50-something yards. You know what I'm saying? That, that's not the Adrian Peterson we know. So, again, I think I think it had to do with the weather. I think it also had a lot to do with, like I said, Pete Carroll was going to have a game plan for Adrian Peterson. He wasn't going to let Adrian Peterson beat him alone. And they did a good job of, of getting themselves ready and going into um, or going on the road in Minnesota and, and that type of inclement weather and, and coming out with the win. Seattle moves on. Green Bay moves on. So let us move on. Let the All Things Sport Podcast move on to the two AFC game wild cards of a wild card weekend. Now, the first one, man, we don't even really have to spend a lot of time on this. Like you said previously, the Kansas City Chiefs were at the Houston Texans. Now, the Houston Texans were a surprise, you know, to make the playoffs. The Chiefs been on a roll, man. Winners of 11 in a row now. uh, Ten straight going into the to the playoffs, 11 in a row now. Why 11 in a row, Pierre? Because they played the Houston Texans. Now, God bless those guys. The Houston Texans have a great defense. J.J. Watt and company, they play good ball on the defensive side in Houston. But they hadn't had a quarterback all year, man. They've gone through a carousel of quarterbacks. And, you know, they started Brian Hoyer. You know, Brian Hoyer. They started him in their, their wild card playoff game. Brian Hoyer had four interceptions and five turnovers, man. That like you said, he played worse than he was hot New York garbage trash. Like he was he stunk up the place like baby doo doo, man. Like it was it was incredible. Like now and how bad does Brandon Whedon have to be for you not to be able to replace Brian Hoyer? I mean, what was going on in, with the Houston Texans and that coaching staff? Brian Hoyer killed them. He gave them no chance to win that game. Kansas City shut the Houston Texans out 30-0 to zero in the playoffs. That is crazy. Brian Hoyer had a series of miscues, and the Texans didn't need someone to come in and be Peyton Manning for him. They didn't need someone to come in and be Tom Terrific. They just need someone to come in and manage the game, someone who wouldn't beat them. And essentially, that's what Brian Hoyer did. With that defense, all you have to do is give him field position, give him a few points, and you're, go- you're, going, to- you're going to be in the game. And they were in the game at halftime. They were only down, what, 13-0? But, I mean, the turnovers just kept piling up and piling up. And before you know it, you know, Kansas City put 30 points on the board. I mean, they were were down 13 and nothing, but they showed no, you know, they they didn't show anything. I mean, it could have been 3-0, to and you would have thought that Kansas City had that game won because Houston couldn't move the ball at all. And any time they did move it, Hoyer would turn it over. I mean, it was just ridiculous. Um Like, again, Brian Horry, I'm sure you're a great guy. I don't know you personally, um, but this loss rests solely on your shoulders and the head coach for not pulling you. I mean, it's ridiculous, man. I mean, you you get these guys get paid millions of dollars to make bonehead decisions. And and I just don't see how you don't pull him and give you give your team a chance to win the game. I mean, Brian Horry gave them no chance to win that game. Yeah. And I think we've already spent 
way too much time talking about that game. That's an open and shut case. I think we can move on now to the most entertaining game of the weekend. So we move on, Pierre. This next game, you know, the second NFC wild card game, AFC wild card game, excuse me. The Pittsburgh Steelers were at the Cincinnati Bengals. This is a perfect segue in the bruh for real, but we're going to get into that one later, and I digress. This game was so crazy, man. You got the Steelers, Big Ben Roethlisberger. He's an NFL champion, man. Facing off against A.J. McCarron, making his first career playoff start, man. You got Marvin Lewis trying to to get off that snide, man, to get that proverbial monkey off his back. Yeah, and I think early the difference was, again, weather. You could tell that A.J. McCarron was just unsettled. He couldn't get a good grip on the ball, kept going from wearing a glove to not wearing a glove. And uh, he, you know, wanted to throw a deep ball one time and just poorly thrown ball just badly under threw it through an interception so a lot of those things were going on early and then late the things that you just brought up just played a major part um the the experience of the Pittsburgh still is mainly and namely Ben Roethlisberger and then that high power offense um just <laughs> they were they were able to make enough plays late and have the Bengals make enough bonehead plays to pull out the win Pierre Pittsburgh had a 15 to 0 lead People think, you know, we think, okay, the game's over. You know, Marvin Lewis, another playoff loss. But A.J. McCarron showed up in the second half, showed out in the fourth quarter, found A.J. Green on a 25-yard touchdown pass with about a minute and 50 left in the game. You would think that, okay, Marvin Lewis is going to pull it off with their backup quarterback. But, no, they had to, pr- they had to prove me right. I thought the Pittsburgh was going to win this game. Didn't know how they were going to win it. I just thought that with the experience of of Roethlisberger, you know, he would he would find a way to win that game. Little did I know that two of the players of the Cincinnati Bengals players on defense were the main reason why they lost that game. Pierre, twenty five yard touchdown pass from AJ McCarron to to AJ Green. The two AJs hooked up. Rejoicing is going on right now in Cincinnati. But what does what happened? What happens on defense? It's it's crazy. You got Vontaze Burfitt, you know, basically throwing his shoulder into Antonio Brown's head, you know, knocking Antonio Brown out, 15 yard penalty. That 15 yard penalty is compounded by Adam Pacman Jones getting into it with with Jerry Porter, as he said. But you know, it's Coach jo- Joey Porter ex. Pittsburgh still a linebacker. He touches the referee, gets another 15-yard penalty, resulting in great field position for Pittsburgh. Ultimately, Chris Boswell's 35-yarder proved to be the game winner. Pittsburgh wins that game 18-16. Crazy, crazy finish in Cincinnati. Yet another playoff loss for Marvin Lewis-Pierre. I don't know what to say about Vontaze, less than perfect, and Adam Pacman Jones. I don't know what to say. And it's a, it's a real shame because the defense really put Cincinnati in the position to win the game. They they played well all night long and held Pittsburgh to to fifteen points late into the game. And then when they took the lead, they even intercepted Landry Jones as soon as he came into the game and did what I thought was preserve the win. You know, but. Pittsburgh's defense came out and made a play. You know, they they stripped um, the running back there, were able to, to recover the ball, and so ensued the, the game when they drive. It's, it's just unfortunate that as well as, as that defense played, they're going to, to be known for the mistakes that were made uh, – on the last drive as opposed to how well they played uh, for 98% of the game. Very unfortunate because, you know, that that is not indicative of how they played this year. They haven't really made too many bonehead plays this year, offensively or defensively. You hadn't heard anything, you know, about Vontez Burfick or Pac-Man Jones getting in any trouble on or off the field. They picked the worst time to revert back to their old ways, man. So, unfortunate Change, you know, set of events for the Cincinnati Bengals. They are out of the playoffs. The Pittsburgh Steelers move on. So the divisional round matchups are set. You got the Carolina Panthers sitting pretty. You got the Arizona Cardinals sitting pretty, man. The Cardinals are going to host the Green Bay Packers. The Panthers are going to host the Seattle Seahawks. And on the AFC side of things, you got the Denver Broncos hosting the Pittsburgh Steelers. And you got Tom Terrific and 
the Patriots hosting the Kansas City Chiefs. We're going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back with our top segment. Not the top five, though, but it's our top segment. It's the fan favorite, Bruh For Real, on the All Things Sport Podcast on Spreaker Radio. This is Damian Banks. Thank you for listening to the 